We're back here, special curator's corners here on NRA News Camera Company on Sportsman Channel. I'm here with Jim Sapika, the director of the NRA Museums. We're out here having quite a day, Mr. Sapika, at the Wanamaker Tulsa Arms Show. What a great run it's been so far. We've seen celebrities, we've seen incredibly rare and, and interesting firearms, talked to lots of different people, collectors and everything. We have another interesting gentleman here, Thomas Seafelt, and, and you were running around. You've been setting this one up for a while. You yeah, seem very excited about these. Uh, yeah. Tell well, us about these, right? old school guns, and these are guns that uh, not as many people are familiar with, possibly, but they're uh, very historic guns. Uh, during a fascinating period of firearms evolution, that uh, period, 1860s, 1870s, a lot of on up through the early 20th century, that's when you see that evolution taken off. And you know, we think about the Colts and Winchesters here in Correct. the U.S., but there's this whole uh, developmental line going on in Europe yeah. with uh, with their military rifles in particular. And uh, uh, you know, at the time, uh, America is fielding trapdoor single shot uh, Springfield rifles. Germans are starting to work with the bolt actions and the repeaters. And looking at these great styres you've got here, we've got a little bit of the history of the military rifle in Europe. So tell us a little bit about these. These are not guns that people see every day. No, this is a, a Verndale uh, 1867-63. Uh, it has an unusual rolling block action, uh, barreled action as they call it, single shot. Uh, then they did move on to uh, uh, the 1873, which had a setter hammer. Now this is this is right at the era when really cartridges were starting to be used. Very the early cartridges, correct. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is the first cartridge uh, firearm produced at the Steyr Works in Steyr, Austria. Okay. Uh, they started in 1867. It fires an 11 by 58R cartridge. There were some modifications to that along the way. And the Steyr guns just throughout history have been very, very well made, uh, innovative firearms. Correct. They've been the belt standard for firearms for, for years and years. The interesting, obviously knowing these are military firearms, they've got bayonets affixed to them, but the the, the, the orientation of that bayonet versus the other one, why the why the why why is it hooked on the side like that? Uh, it was typical from the older socket style bayonets mm -hmm. and that, and uh, it was a holdover from there. The Yangistang type style, long curved bayonet, uh, some say it was just used to intimidate enemy soldiers by the sheer looks of it. Uh, and then of course you have a couple extra inches there than, than these. Now most Austrian bayonets, it's uh, the cutting edge is on the top right. of the uh, blade instead yeah. of the bottom with a lot of other militaries. They yeah. used the idea that you were going to pull up and, and do your cutting. And uh, it was, well like this being the single shot uh, and ammunition was always a concern. Uh, they were planning on getting down to using the bayonet as part of the uh, battle plan. The bayonet was a serious fighting tool then. Correct. All right, let's move on to the other right Yeah, there. now we're used to seeing the Mauser bolt actions. Correct. And, and uh, there's so many American sporters that are based on that Mauser turn bolt style. You lift the bolt, pull it back, push it forward, turn it down. Steyr had kind of a different concept on this. Show us how this one works and tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, it's the Steyr uh, 1895 straight pull. New gun, a little tight. Cocks on uh, opening, which makes that a little bit tougher, but it's just a straight back, straight mm. forward. You're not uh, operating it. Faster gun than a traditional turn bolt. Correct. And it uses the, uh, the standard Steyr stripper clip, yeah. which uh, the M1 Garand ended up adopting that was uh, known as a, a Manlicher style clip on yeah. Blanc yeah. clip. And it, the clip itself comes out the bottom when the rifle's empty. It holds the cartridge until the last cartridge is, is chambered, then it drops away and a fresh one is put in. And uh, this model would have been used by? This was the uh, Austrian military, uh, Austro-Hungarian, yeah. and uh, some of the allies uh, Various countries adopted on a, on a smaller scale, and then after uh, World War I, this uh, took on evolution into uh, newer models. The, this is a carbine, there was a Stutzen, which is a short rifle, and then the full rifle, which would be similar in size to this. Uh, and these rifles were, were used in World War II for reserve troops, things like that. Many were converted to 8mm Mauser. 
Now the Swiss Schmidt Rubin was a straight pole rifle too. Correct. Is it adapted from this, or do you no, know? No, this the... was an original design by Steyr. Okay, and then did the do you know if the Swiss borrowed it for their Schmidt Rubin? Um, or, uh, there, there was probably you know a lot uh, of simultaneous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever through there. The other thing I find interesting, you can tell with the military, there's very little like formality. They just go ahead. And they've got the number stamped right there, and it's very about practicality with these. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And then uh, usually on the butt plate, you have the battalion, the company, and then the rifle number, so they could be tracked on those. Sometimes stamped into the stock, sometimes not. Uh, with this, it's interesting. They they shot this rifle out to it was eight or nine hundred posse, and a posse was a, a step in Italian. So we're talking about you know an average thirty. 30 inch step. They would shoot at a, a man's head sized target at 200 posse yeah. and a man sized target at uh, I believe it's 600 posse and then they would also have uh, on mass volley fire where the whole squad would fire at a predetermined target at a, at a shorter range but it was a big rectangular as it opposing infantry or cavalry coming in and this was the first cartridge uh, firearm developed by Steyr it is also the last big bore black powder military rifle adapted by any European army. Well, you have a wonderful exhibit here. We really appreciate you having that. We've got uh, some of the great military firearms from this era at the NRA National Firearms Museum in uh, uh, Fairfax, Virginia. Uh, but getting to see them here is a special it treat. Is. And that is a wonderful museum I've been to. Thank you very much. Thomas Seafeld, thank, thank you. you, Tom. Thank Thanks you. for being with us here on Curator's Corner. We appreciate it. Yep, no problem.